From time to time, your sanitary valve requires routine maintenance to ensure peak operating efficiency. This video will teach you the standard service procedures of the SPX Flow APV Delta DA3 Plus Double Seat Mix Proof Valve. Servicing the DA3 Plus Mix Proof Valve will require the tools displayed here. It's important to note the use of APV food grade grease in the maintenance procedure to ensure proper operation of the valve and its internal components. Use of other brands or types of grease may cause damage to internal components, resulting in a malfunctioning valve. Please refer to the operation manual for additional details on where and how to apply grease throughout the maintenance process. Prior to removal of the valve from the process line, the control top should be removed and set aside during the maintenance procedure. Start by marking the lower proximity cable so that it can be easily identified when the valve is returned to service. Once the lower cable is marked, the proximity switches can be removed from the mounting block by loosening the collars. Next, disconnect the air lines and loosen the two clamp hex bolts with a 4 mm hex wrench at the base of the control top. Once loose, lift the control top off and set aside for safekeeping until the maintenance procedure is complete. Before attempting removal of the valve insert from the process line, Verify that pumps are locked out and tagged out and that all pressure has been removed from the process line. Two retaining bolts and one jacking bolt will be required to safely remove the valve insert from the process line. With a 13 mm wrench, remove two of the flange bolts on opposite sides of the flange. In the same locations, insert the two longer retaining bolts until the thread is flush with the flange bottom. Note that the retaining bolts should not be threaded in all the way. Once the retaining bolts are in place, the other two flange bolts can be safely removed. Insert the jacking bolt into the threaded jacking bore and turn with a 13 mm box end wrench until the valve insert is elevated from the flange slightly and the seal has been broken. It is now safe to remove the retaining bolts and lift the valve insert from the valve body. After the valve insert is removed from the valve body, the lower shaft seal should be removed. To remove the lower shaft seal, expose the sharp pick end of the lower shaft seal tool by turning the black protective housing counterclockwise. Accessing from the top of the body, the pick should pierce the middle of the lower shaft seal and pull from its machined groove in the body. Care should be taken not to scratch or make contact with the metal surfaces in the valve body. Once the seal has been partially removed, lower the protective black cover back over the pick and tighten into position. Use the protective cover to pull the lower elastomer shaft seal and PTFE seal out of the body. With the valve insert removed from the body, the valve can now be taken to a workstation to complete the maintenance procedures. With a 24 mm box end wrench, Remove the stop sleeve, exposing the lock washer and stop nut that is located on top of the main actuator cylinder. With two 17 mm box end wrenches, remove the self-locking nut located below the lower shaft. Slide the lower shaft off of the guide rod and remove the guide rod through the top of the actuator. Continue with the removal of the stop nut and lock washer. Lift the actuator assembly off of the upper shaft, followed by removal of the valve seat wrench chamber and seat ring. Using a pick, remove the O-ring from the groove located in the middle of the guide rod. Next, remove the small O-ring from the groove in the lower shaft. Then remove the elastomeric lower middle seat seal, taking care not to scratch the lower shaft. Once the seat is partially removed from the groove, the remainder of the seat can be pulled out by hand. With the seat ring in hand, remove both seat seals from the housing. Next, remove the seals and split guide bearing from the valve seat wrench chamber.
Apply a thin layer of approved lubricant to the guide rod O-ring and install by carefully slipping the O-ring down the machined groove. Next, install the seat ring seals with a thin layer of lubricant into the corresponding grooves in the seat ring. Check for a tight fit of each seal after installation. Next, install the seals and split guide ring into the valve seat wrench chamber. Apply a thin layer of approved lubricant to each seal and install as shown. Be sure to check that there is an even fit of the two housing seals by turning the valve seat wrench chamber between your fingers. Next, install the elastomer seal, taking note of its correct orientation. Continue by installing the seal on the other end of the wrench chamber in the lower groove. Finally, install the split bearing into the upper groove. Note that it does not require lubricant and should simply be guided in. After ensuring that the lower shaft seal grooves are clean and free of debris, apply a thin layer of approved lubricant to the new middle seal and O-ring prior to installation. Start by installing the new O-ring into the internal groove of the lower shaft. Next, install the middle seal by means of the middle seal assembly tool. First, begin by disassembling the seal assembly tool. Position the lower shaft into the tool housing and lock into place with the mating housing piece. The lower shaft should fit snug into the housing. Place the middle seal tool housing assembly with lower shaft into a vise and secure. Now, install the middle seal on the seat alignment guide ring and position the guide ring on the lower shaft. Insert the thrust ring, followed by the C-lock nut and thread onto the housing. Tighten the C-lock nut with a spanner wrench as shown. Once tight, remove the C-lock nut, the thrust ring, and seat alignment guide ring. Next, remove the tool housing from the vice jaws and remove the lower shaft from the housing. Inspect the seat seal for even and proper installation. With all of the wetted seals installed, assembly of the valve can commence. Begin by applying a layer of lubricant on the upper stem balancer to aid in installation of the seat ring and valve rinse chamber. From the top of the upper shaft, install the seat ring, ensuring proper orientation, and then slide down over the upper shaft balancer and all the way down. Next, install the valve wrench chamber all the way until the seat ring fits into the wrench chamber base. This may require upward physical manipulation of the upper shaft to get these pieces to mate up. Installation of the actuator assembly can now take place and should be installed in the same manner. Once in position, the lock washer and stop nut can be installed and tightened with a torque wrench to 40 newton meters. Continue assembling the wet end of the valve by inserting the guide rod through the stop nut on the top of the actuator. Note the orientation of the guide rod prior to installing and push all the way until a hard stop is felt. The lower shaft can now be slipped over the guide rod and into its final position. This may require a slight turn of the lower stem to drop all the way into position. Now install the stop sleeve and tighten to a torque value of 15 newton meters. Follow this by installing the safety nut below the lower shaft and tighten to a torque value of 40 newton meters. Before the valve insert can be installed into service, the lower shaft seal must be installed back into the body. Like the upper shaft seal, this is a two-piece seal consisting of an elastomeric seal and PTFE carrier. The PTFE carrier will be installed first with the aid of the lower shaft seal tool. Install the larger diameter to the bottom of the body and use the housing of the tool to ensure correct positioning of the seat all the way around. Apply a thin layer of lubricant on the elastomeric portion of the shaft seal and maneuver the seal into position as was done with the PTFE carrier. Note that the widest part of the seal will face toward the bottom of the body. 
Once in position, use the housing of the tool to push the elastomeric seal into the groove and work all the way around until the entire seal is flush with the PTFE carrier portion of the seal. The valve insert is now ready to be installed back into the process pipeline. The jacking screw should initially be kept in place. Note the orientation of the valve insert and carefully lower it into the valve housing. Once the valve is in the correct position, all four flange bolts can be installed finger tight. Next, remove the jacking bolt before tightening the flange bolts with a 13 mm wrench. Based on production schedules, it may be beneficial to stock a spare insert with newly installed seals to expedite changeovers and minimize downtime. After installing the control top adapter onto the main actuator cylinder, Set the loose clamp around the adapter until the control top is in place. Set the control top back in place, being sure to align the position guides. Gently push the top down until the control base and adapter come together. Next, position and tighten the clamp to secure the top in place. Connect the air lines to the control top. Next, install the proximity sensors into the mounting blocks by first removing the collar and lock ring. Position the locking collar over the proximity sensor and then place the lock ring onto the sensor. Repeat the process for both sensors. Ensure the sensor cables are installed in the correct location based on your original markings during the removal process. Actuator repair is typically performed only when necessary and outside of the routine valve maintenance already shown in this video. Seal kits for actuator maintenance are available for purchase. Check with your authorized SPX Flow sales representative for details. With a 13 mm box end wrench, loosen and remove all four hex bolts holding the seat lifting device and main actuator cylinder in position. Once removed, first lift off the seat lifting device and then the main actuator assembly from the spring actuator cylinder. On the seat lifting device, Thread the stop screw in a few threads and then apply downward pressure on the stop screw until the piston assembly is pushed out of the housing. Apply pressure to the top of the piston rod to push the piston assembly out of the main actuator cylinder. With a pick, remove the seals in the seat lifting device and main actuator cylinder and pistons as shown. To start reassembly, apply a thin layer of recommended lubricant to the new elastomeric seals to be installed in the seat lifting device and main actuator. Please reference the maintenance manual for specification, as this is different from the lubricant used in the wet end maintenance procedures. Install as shown, ensuring each is properly seated in the housing and piston. Next, reinstall the seat lifting device piston assembly by placing it into the housing and then begin threading the stop sleeve into the top of the piston assembly. Flip the housing over and assist in guiding the piston seal into the housing. Take care to avoid pinching the seal as the piston moves into the housing. Finally, remove the stop sleeve to complete the reassembly. Next, insert the piston rod and piston assembly back into the main actuator cylinder. Assist the piston seals to ensure no pinching takes place during installation and push the piston into the housing. Once complete, place the main actuator cylinder into position on the spring actuator. Follow this by positioning the seat lifting actuator cylinder on top of the main actuator cylinder taking note of the location of the cylinder pin and its mating guide hole in the tops of the main cylinder. Correct positioning will be assured by alignment of the air connections on both cylinders. 
Once aligned and in position, install the four hex bolts and tighten with a 13mm box end wrench. Following these procedures will help you properly maintain your DA3 Plus valves to maximize operating life and maintain process integrity. To order replacement seal kits or tools, contact your authorized SPX Flow sales representative or visit www.spxflow.com/apv for more information.